Hi, hello and welcome to this video. In this, we are going to discuss about solving a common error that's happening in our solar inverters. I was discussing with my tech support team and they said this is the topic we'll have to focus on in this video because this error is kind of seasonal. It happens in uh, rainy season mostly and we are in India and it's raining nowadays. So we have a lot of these errors happening in many of our installations and from our customer side. So we are now going to talk about solving ISO fault or earth fault or insulation failure in a solar inverter. Let's get into the video. Before connecting to the grid, a solar on-grid inverter has a character or a habit, it's a safety standard as well, to check the insulation resistance of the DC side. It first checks the insulation resistance on the DC side and checks if it is higher than the said value. In some inverters, it's even 1000 kilo ohms, which should be satisfied for the inverter to get started. So if this said insulation resistance is not achieved or is not available or is not present, then the inverter shows you this ISO fault or earthing resistance failure or insulation failure. There can be a number of reasons why this error is happening. One uh, very common reason is from a broken solar panel. Second is uh, poorly crimped MC4 connectors or DC connectors. Or um, when you install the plant, when the installer was pulling the cable, he had scratched the cable on a cable tray or something. And uh, due to um, due accumulation in the connectors or in a junction box, even when the DC SPD fails, you will still see this error happening. So this is why this these things put together is a reason why this error is happening in your solar plant. But there is also another reason like you can see your plant working normally and all of a sudden you see one day the plant is showing this error. That is because you must have had a rainy day in between because there was a poor connection between the MC4 connectors and then all of a sudden there was a rain which made the contact from this cable to the ground. So you can have this uh, error happening on a day when you were cleaning the solar panel. So the plant was working fine. One fine day you go clean the panel with water and the next day this error happens. That is again the reason because water has uh, made a contact between this uh, um, insulation failure area and the earthing area. So they, these are reasons why all of a sudden you get this error in your inverter. So you don't have to be worried thinking it was a nicely working plant and all of a sudden I am getting this error. That's the reason. Let's assume this circuit which has four solar panels in connected in a string and each solar panel is giving out 50 volt as an output. So the open circuit voltage of the string is going to be 200 volt. Now assume your inverter is giving a earth fault and the fault is here. Now how to check this and identify the fault is what we are going to explain now. First you take your multimeter, check the voltage between the positive of the string and negative of the string which will say 200 volt because there are four solar panels with 50 volt each so it's going to be 200 volt. Now check the voltage between the positive and ground. Since the second solar module or the connection between second and third module is grounded, you will get a voltage of 50 plus 50, 100 volt on positive and ground. And when you check on the other side, negative to ground will again have 50 plus 50, 100 volt. So then you can easily identify where the connection is leaking. So since it's 100 volt and when every solar panel is giving only 50, so obviously the leakage is happening after the second panel. So for example, if the leakage was not happening here, instead if the leakage was happening here, what happens now is when you check positive to ground, you will get a voltage of 50 and when you check negative to ground you will get a voltage of 
50 plus 50 plus 50 150 volt when you take negative to ground for this issue let's assume there is a fault here now what happens now when you measure the voltage between positive to ground the voltage will be 200 which is same as positive and negative because the leakage is happening on the negative side after the fourth solar module so positive to ground will never give you a clue of where the leakage is happening but when you measure negative to ground then you will see a very low voltage as minimum as zero volt and that's where the clue lies then you will know that the leakage is going to happen here so this is how you identify where the leakage is happening in on-grid solar systems it's not just four solar panels whereas you have 20 or 20 plus solar panels so by knowing the voltage of one single solar panel and knowing the voltage between the positive to ground and negative to ground you can easily identify where the fault is happening this is how you identify a ground fault but now imagine if the leakage is going to happen here as well as here there are two places the leakage is happening then you are put in a very difficult situation because it's not as easy as finding one single point leakage now when you measure the positive to ground there are chances you will get only 50 volt or depending on how much leakage here and how much leakage here you may also end up getting a voltage which is somewhere between these two so that situation can also happen when you have more than one leakage in a string so when there are more than one leakage in a string this setup may not work for you you will still have to physically go and figure out where the exact point of leakage is happening so this ha this can happen already as i told you by a broken solar module or bad connections um, between the panels or even insulation failure in your solar dc cable and it has to be attended immediately because it's a leakage of 1000 volt DC and it can be lethal. So when ISO fault or ground fault occurs, immediately switch off your inverter and go climb on your roof and get this sorted as soon as possible. I explained you how to identify this error or find where the error is happening in one particular string but it will be a challenge when you have an inverter which has more than one string. So to identify which string is particularly causing this error itself becomes a challenge. So the inverters that come with string level monitoring can easily tell you this is the string that's giving me that problem. Otherwise you will have to individually pull out one string at a time and then switch on the inverter to see which string has caused this issue to the inverter okay now when you are going to check this abnormality in your system you have to check when that happens because this can be a normal system in a normal day but only when the um, rain has come or when your solar panel is damp and wet by the rain that's when you will have this issue so when this issue happens I um, tell you to check the plant immediately during this abnormality is happening otherwise you are missing the point of checking the system the very next day when you go check on the roof and the roof is dry then you may not have this error in your system at all hope you understand the point there the next point is uh, why this is happening so while pulling the DC string we um, normally have an insulation failure so that can create this issue or while crimping a MC4 connector if it was not taken um, properly then you can have this issue so be very careful while installing your solar plant and avoid ISO and insulation failures thanks for watching